I found it really interesting, the comments that came out of Tevin Jenkins recently about Luke Getze saying that it was something along the lines of, I, I don't know what verbatim, but it was something along the lines of that there were like a lot of gray areas last year. Whereas this year, it seems like everybody's a little bit more on the same page. Guys, I mean, Luke Getzey was a quarterback's coach. A quarterback's coach for Aaron Rodgers, which, David, you've told me, Aaron Rodgers does, doesn't really probably need a quarterback coach. If anything, he might have taught Luke Getzey some things, right? And so yeah. we take a guy from that position and promote him to offensive coordinator, and he might have just not been ready for it, um, especially if you have offensive linemen coming out saying that things weren't clearly defined for you know multiple scenarios and whatnot and you know i think that kind of struck me a little bit because i think what we're getting with shane waldron is a guy that at least has experience being an offensive coordinator right so at least i feel a lot better about that but you know with tevin jenkins too i think it's interesting with his situation the whole contract coming up and whatnot do you think you know i know he asked for an extension and at first they didn't get back to him. Now they said, well, let's wait until midseason, until the bye week, and we'll resume yeah. talks. Do you think that's a smart move on the Bears' end? I think so. I think it's the only move you sh- you could make with a guy like that. And you know how much we take uh, stock into capology and thinking like two years, three years ahead and like where you distribute your money and everything like that. Tevin Jenkins, for sure, I think I was one of your – he was one of my favorite players very, very – Early on, I want to say, like, even in that Texans game two years back, and I texted you within the first three or four plays just saying how much, like, if this guy plays like this, I mean, he's a top five guard in this league. So I've been a fan for Te- of Tevin Jenkins for a pretty good amount of time, but when he's healthy, he's good. The problem is if he's healthy. And I think that's almost like a, it's the most media savvy, politically correct way of telling Tevin Jenkins, like, dude, if you stay healthy, you're going to get paid. It's one of those like read between the lines kind of comments. Like if you're going to say that we're, we'll, we'll talk at the bye week, that's basically saying like, are you going to be healthy till the bye week? Cause if you're healthy at the bye week, well, you'll have a lot of power at that negotiating table. But if you're missing six, seven, eight games and it's week 10 and we're at the bye, like you're, you're going to be a free agent. So right. I think it's the smart, I think it's the smart thing to do. And it's also kind of the politically correct way of saying like, Basically, just stay healthy and we'll talk. Well, you know, it's interesting. In in a recent press conference that Tevin Jenkins had after uh, one of the training camps, um, he was talking about how he's putting a lot more time and effort into his diet, the things he puts into his body. He said he's never been a big massage guy, but now he's starting to get massages and this and that. And I remember watching like the quarterback documentary on Netflix with Mm -hmm. Kirk Cousins. And he said very early on, Santana Moss on the Redskins, it was like a 15-year vet, and he yeah. told him, man, you, you got to get massaged. You got to treat your body right if you want to last in this league. And he took that advice and ran with it, and it's very, very, very important. So it's kind of interesting to hear Tevin Jenkins talk about how he's starting to realize the importance of that. And I mean, you know, in his personal life, I believe he just had a kid or he's got a kid on the way. Like this guy's going to want to get paid. He's going to want another contract and he's, you know, you're going to want to make the most money you can in this league, especially with how short of a lifespan players have in the NFL and whatnot. Uh, You want to capitalize on it the most. And so, yeah, I think he realizes that health is his issue too. I think he realizes, Hey, I got to stay on this field and hopefully he's starting to do some different things, whether it's diet wise, you know, taking care of yourself physically, that will improve that. But, you know, David, to your point, last year he missed the first five games of the season. And then he was out for one more at the end of the se- towards the end of the season. But it wasn't until week six against the Vikings that Tevin Jenkins was on the field. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Maybe. You and that. this is something that I don't really hear talked about about Tevin Jenkins a lot. And it's something that is the number one thing that concerns me by far. And, uh, I don't really hear about it in the whole injury discussion thing. Um, all pro centers, cool. I mean, I hope, yeah, hopefully he doesn't have to shift to center. I thought about that a lot today. If, like, a guard gets hurt, if any of these guards get hurt, and then you have to slide Ryan Bates out to guard, and then, you know, now you're talking yeah, about then you have, Connor Williams again. Then you have, then you have uh, uh, the other center we, we got from the Rams. Yeah, so. uh, Sh- Coleman Shelton. Yeah, yeah. no, so this is the number one thing I was thinking about with Tevin Jenkins because in uh, chat or you can jog my memory. What was the main reason he was out for five weeks? Because I think he hurt like a leg. 
he hurt an ankle or something. But the thing that always catches my attention with Tevin Jenkins is when he gets those neck stingers and he always like he'll go limp or lose feeling in his legs or in his fingers or whatever. And me and you, I think we've commented on it to each other privately, like on text where we're just like, this guy can't play much longer in the NFL. If he's just – every time he gets a stinger and he feels like a shock to his spine, I, I think that's a big deal though. Like, yeah, so exactly. So if it's his neck, I don't care how many massages you're getting, like spinal injuries or spinal injuries. Like I, I worry about that guy, not even just like as a player in the NFL. I like worry about him as a person because everything I've seen about him, he seems like a really nice dude. And like, like you said, he had a baby and a wife. And every time he gets a, a stinger in the neck and he stays on the ground, because that's usually the times you see Tevin Jenkins get hurt. As he's just immobile, borderline getting ready to be carried off on a stretcher. And I'm just like, I'm worried about the dude. So can you even can you even uh, adjust for that? Like spine injuries and neck injuries and uh, yeah, Miles Garrett. Yeah, yeah so I don't know. I, I wonder about that guy. I wonder about that guy. Yeah, and you know, and like you said, he's a top five guard in this league when he's on the field though. Right. And so, yeah. so it, it's such an interesting situation because you want to be able to keep a guy like that. I mean, listen, when putting together highlight videos, he sticks out. He's got a crazy yeah. motor, man. He plays through the whistle. I see him jumping on piles. Like this is the type of offensive lineman I want on my team. Yeah. But for talking money, for talking contract, you kind of wind up, you know, from the GM point of view, offering some, him something that's, you know, if, if he can only play half a season, guess what? You're only getting so much money, right? Like, and you don't want to insult the player either. And at the same time, they want to capitalize on their contracts. So maybe the best path winds up being hitting free agency and going somewhere else to another team that pays you, which would be sad. It would be really sad. But, yeah, so I think waiting till the bye week is definitely probably like the only realistic move you can make with this situation. I wouldn't have done anything right now with him either, you know? Yeah, no, I think it's the logical thing to do. And we've talked about it like that. I guess if, um, and I got to look it up, but I know Robert Hunt is pretty much the largest paid guard or the highest paid guard um, in the NFL after that contract he signed with the, with the Panthers, which is five years, 100 mil. Holy cow, 20 mil a year. Wow. So like, yeah, these guys are getting paid, man. That's wild. And so, like, if you're talking about if Tevin Jenkins has a bad year, you're probably still in the, like, 12, 13. That, and I remember you were on a different show talking about, like, what's your comfort zone of, you know, of what you, you want to pay that guy. Like, I think we all agree it's, like, 12, 13. But then we self-admittedly say he's a top five guard in the league if he's healthy. And top five guards in the league get paid 20 mil a year. Like, you can't do that. Even if he is the top five guard, I don't think – Team building wise, you can structurally say that like your top five players on your team are Montez Sweat or in terms of pay. Um, yeah, Mike McGlinchey got 18 mil. Thank God. That's one of those uh sliding door moments that we always talk about. Like Ryan Poles got saved from himself right there. Like Mike, yeah. Mike McGlinchey was he was ready to pay Mike McGlinchey and then Denver stepped in and did a Denver thing. Um Ryan Poles, he was a gold member, saved me from myself, right? Eating the skin. Right. But um <laughs> yeah, no, that that's one of those lucky save you from yourself. But like you you can't pay you can't pay uh Tevin Jenkins 20 mil a year and then in two, three years when you gotta pay receivers 30 mil, quarterbacks 40 mil, 50 mil, like you just can't have that on your con on your budget. Mm -hmm.